guys, welcome to the meat shop. Uh, today I have some free time because I had a bunch of pigs that didn't show up this week. So I sent everybody home and I have the afternoon to play around. And I'm going to make, for the first time ever, the roast beef dinner sausage. I've always kind of wanted to make this one. Um, I've never made it before, not sure how it's going to turn out. It's brand new creation. It's going to be a beef, fresh beef sausage with all the fixings of a roast beef dinner. Uh, mashed potatoes, peas, a little bit of horseradish and gravy is going to be all in the sausage. If it turns out, I'll share the link down below. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll share the link down below. Uh, so let's try and make the roast beef sausage. Okay guys, so this is what I do when I'm not working. I play with meat. Uh, and what I've, like I said maybe, is what I've always wanted to do is take the roast beef dinner and see if I can make it into a sausage. Um, so I'm not going to follow all the rules. Uh, it's going to be a quite a bit different sausage you guys have probably seen on the channel before. Um, I'm not going to use any binder today. Um, I'm gonna, I got some ingredients cooked up and measured out ahead of time. So basically what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to take the roast beef dinner and get it into a sausage. Um, so I've got some lean ground, well, uh, yeah, it's about, it's about 20 or 15% fat ground beef. Uh, and so that's going to be the roast beef portion of this. I'm just going to season it up like you would season up roast beef. And then I'm going to add all the fixings. So I got some mashed potatoes I did up ahead of time. I got some peas I did up ahead of time. I made up some gravy. I'm going to use that instead of water. And I got a little bit of seasonings. Um, so I did a fine grind on this because that's what I had available in the freezer this morning. I took this out to thaw and uh, it's thawed out ready to go now. But I was thinking if I were to do this again and I had a little bit more time, so this is double ground, ground first on a 3 8 plate, a 10 millimeter plate for you guys at home, and then finished on a fine plate, which is 1 8 3 millimeters, and that gives you fine ground beef. I think if I was to do this again, I would do it the second grind on something just a little bit coarser, and I would use uh, some nice hip meat, like inside round uh, or outside round with some good marbling in it to be the roast part of the roast beef sausage. And also, if I didn't mention this, I've never made this before, so I don't know if it's going to be any good. So I got, that's going to be the roast portion. Got the, all the other fixings there. And the seasonings for this recipe here, guys, which I'm trying out for the first time. So I might tweak them. But we're going to use... So this is all based off this weight, the weight of this meat, which is 1.5 kilograms, three and a quarter pounds. Um, so all this, all this, uh, the spices and whatnot is based off 1.5, and I have the mashed potatoes, peas, and gravy set up on a ratio based off the meat weight. So you'd plug in the meat weight, multiply all these things by however many kilograms you have of the meat to get the spices, mashed potatoes and peas and such. So I have 1.5 kilograms of meat, so I'm going to use salt at 18 grams per kilogram. I'm going to use black pepper at 3 grams per kilogram. I'm going to use garlic powder at 3 grams per kilogram. I'm going to use onion powder at 2 grams per kilogram. So my thinking was that's kind of what you stereotypically season ground beef with. Um, at the most basic level, and then people can doctor it up from there if you want to put a little thyme on there or oregano or whatever you like to season your ground beef with when you cook at home, just add that to this list. So salt, black pepper, garlic, onion powder. Then I'm using mashed potatoes at 450 grams per kilogram. So I just took five medium to large sized potatoes, cooked them up this morning, and mashed them up just with a little salt, onion powder, and garlic powder. So do the mashed potatoes however you do mashed potatoes at home. I leave the skins on. I like potato skins. So 450 grams, which was about five medium to large sized potatoes for three and a quarter pounds or 1.5 kgs. Frozen peas, 100 grams per kilogram. Gravy, 666 grams per kilogram. So I have one liter here one kilogram of gravy to use on my 1.5 kgs of 
roast beef. I'm just realizing that's way too much. I want to use 100 milliliters per kilogram. We'll keep it at that. We'll make it really gravy. -y. I've changed my mind. This is an experiment day. I can change my mind if I want to. I'm going to use, because there's quite a bit of mashed potatoes, so you want to keep it more moist, I'm thinking. Because when I'm just thinking about my dinner plate, I put gravy on the mashed potatoes and the roast beef. So I'm going to use 200 milliliters of roast beef per kilogram. So I need 300 milliliters of 300 milliliters of gravy total. So these are the spices, salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. I just need a bowl to use, add them on. Okay, then I will measure out my gravy. So again, that's 200 milliliters per kilogram is what I'm going with in this recipe. So I need 300, and for this gravy, I made it a little bit thinner than I normally would make a gravy just because I wanted to distribute the spices and all that stuff in the sausage. I don't want it to be too thick. I want it to be throughout the whole sausage. So it's a little bit thinner. Okay, got my 300 milliliters of gravy. Mashed potatoes, we'll throw them in. Throw them on. We got our frozen peas. Throw them on. Kind of distribute this a little bit here. You know what I should have done? I have instant regrets. <laughs> It's an experiment day though, I'm having fun. I would have mixed up the, the meat and the spices before I added on the potatoes and peas because it was probably gonna mush up the peas and potatoes bad. I kinda want chunks in there. So I'm just gonna kinda separate them off to the side the best I can. And we'll just mix the meat and the spices up here. Get out of here, peas. Then I'll add the uh, potatoes on and just give them a light toss. And I'm not using binder and I usually tell you guys to mix the heck out of this so you get protein extraction But I think the potatoes are because there's quite a bit of potatoes in here. It is like What is that a third or 25 percent potatoes? So I think that's gonna Be the binder factor. So I don't think you have to mix it a ton You do want to mix it till it gets a little bit sticky, I guess All right, so I got those spices Distributed through there and add my thin gravy Instead of water and I'm using 20% instead of 10. I normally use 10 in my recipes um, Just because there's so much potatoes. I think those potatoes are gonna absorb quite a bit of that gravy and I love gravy so All right try and get that meat to absorb up a bunch of that gravy. <laughs> I Don't know how this is gonna turn out <laughs> All right, throw the potatoes in. It's kind of like looking and smelling like a shepherd's pie, kind of. So first impressions is, probably could use more potatoes. I can't hardly see the potatoes. I can see the peas, but the potatoes have kind of blended. You can see, kind of see them a little bit. Let me bring it in. All right, so there it is, guys. That's the mashed potato meatball. You can kind of see the chunks of potato in there a little bit. You can see the peas in there a little bit. You want, a little, you want a pea or two in every bite. So I think that's kind of about the right amount, I'm guessing. Looks okay. And you know what? I forgot I love in roasts is horseradish. So I'm going to add some horseradish to this uh, sausage. And I'm going to put, just eyeball what I think is right. Got some, oh, oh gloves won't hot horseradish here. What do you think? You think that's about enough? A doll up like that. Do you guys like horseradish? I don't know. I think that's enough. Smear that in. Mix around. I should have put that in the gravy. But, oh well. Oh yeah, that smells like roast beef now. Okay guys, I'm just going to mix this up a little bit and then toss it in the stuffer. Same uh, rules apply for this sausage, I think, is you want to punch the air pockets out. And yeah, the mashed potatoes are pretty much gone. There's just a couple little pockets. Mm, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you could just throw roasted potatoes in there. Or you could throw 
Maybe don't mash them. Just chuck them in before they get mashed. But I like that creamy, creamy texture. So we'll see how it goes. All right, guys. So we got the experiment mixed up. And it's going to be the same as other sausages. They're all the same. Grab a handful. Mm. I guess at this point I should be frying it since it's an experiment and seeing how it tastes. But I'm just going to go straight to stuffing. I got a feeling it'll be good. All right. And then you push it in, grab a handful, handful, and push it into the bottom of your stuffer. And this will help get rid of the air pockets. Uh, it doesn't eliminate air pockets, but it helps get rid of them for the stuffing process. Okay guys, I got the sausage stuffer loaded up and I'm gonna use natural 2932 hog casings. Uh, so you just soak these, rinse the salt off into the sink or something like that. Um, then throw them in room temperature water for about a half hour before you wanna use them, which I've done. And this is gonna be way more sausage casing than we need. But you just open up the insides. If I can find the inside. Where are you at, you bugger? Okay, so, found it. Open up the inside, then you scoop in a little water, and that will flush any remaining salt out of the inside as it goes on to our stuffing horn. So you just open it up, if you can see that, open it up, slide it over the horn. And then you thread it on, stuff okay so we got it loaded onto the stuffing horn just pull a little bit off there to uh, start with just get this guy applying pressure and you just let the first little bit sneak out of the horn see there the first little bit then I just pinch it hold it back on the horn and let her buck <laughs> kind of looks weird all those little peas coming out in there and every so often, guys, you want to pinch and check. Make sure you can pinch about a quarter of the way through. Uh, if it's too tight and real firm, you're going to have troubles when you link. If it's too loose, the sausage casing is going to be chewy. All right, not really seeing any chunks of potatoes. They kind of got blended in to hold that gravy and horseradish. I have no idea. I got a feeling this is going to be good, though. I've always wanted to make this. I've never had time. So today's the day. Mmm. All right. There we go. So to recap, it's lean ground beef, mashed potatoes, gravy, peas, salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and horseradish. Okay guys, so if you haven't seen me do the linking before, I just find the end, pinch, however big you want your sausage, pinch again, spin towards yourself three times, one, two, three, go another four or five inches, skip that one, Go to the next one towards yourself one, two, three times. I'm gonna do this whole link like that. You don't gotta watch me do it. Okay guys, there they are. Took me about a minute or two. Got them all linked up. Um, usually this is where I end the video, but uh, since this is an experiment, I gotta let you guys know how these taste to see if you wanna, if I suggest you make them at home or not. So I'm gonna go fire up the grill, throw them on the barbecue and see if they're any good. Okay guys, I'm just out here, so if it's a little windy, excuse me, but I uh, fired up the barbecue. It's preheated to 400. Cook them however you, you guys know how to cook sausages. I'm not a cooking show, so you know how to do it. Let's just give these guys a test. All right, there they are. We'll come back in a couple minutes, give them a flip. Okay, my thoughts were they wouldn't be too flary because you know, most of the, it's half potatoes, and it's pretty lean beef, so they're not too bad. A little smoky, not too bad. Nice grill marks, give her a flip. I'm real curious to see how the texture is on these guys. I was thinking another way, instead of the grilling these, it would be to cook them in a pan, you know, just fry them, sear them until you get some nice dark color on the outside on both sides and throw just a little bit of butter in right at the end but we'll see how the barbecued ones version goes all right another couple minutes on the other side got some burstage got them a little bit hot uh, might just put them on the top shelf and kind of let them bake to finish that's my plan lots of juice pouring out of them guys though 
looking good. I'm getting hungry. I'll show you the damage. A little bit of burstage. All right, they've been kind of on the top rack baking for a bit. How do they look? Can you see them, guys? But anyways, looks like they're just about done here, guys. The color's good. They're dripping some juices. Oh, yeah, roast beef. Might leave them just a minute longer, just in case they ain't quite done. Sizzling some juice. So I got a feeling they're pretty darn close to done. Okay, I killed the drill. I'm gonna pull these guys off and taste test them. Here they are coming right off though. Yeah. Alright guys, here they are. Just pulled them off. Got into them to see how they look. Yeah, kind of a crumbly texture, but I kind of thought they might from I realized I didn't put my mic on. Sorry guys. But the first bite, I said it's a little bit crumbly. You can kind of tell. I kind of thought it might be from the mashed potatoes. But uh, the flavor is really good. It kind of tastes like shepherd's pie is how I describe that. It's not like your stereotypical sausage texture. It's kind of crumbly. Maybe you could mix it more. But I kind of feel like those mashed potatoes would do that to it. But the flavor is really good. That gravy is delicious. That thin gravy. It's got quite a bit of flavor, a little bit different texture. So, I don't know. It's really yummy. I don't know if I would make it again. I would probably make it again. Anyways, you guys, <laughs> that was my experiment for the day. Uh, I'm going to eat a couple more of these because they are pretty good. So, what I, I guess overall rating, would I make them again? Uh, yeah, flavor's good. They're easy, pretty tasty. I always wanted to do it. I wanted to see how it turned out. A couple things I could improve. I think I would do more mixing. I would maybe add a binder uh, to get a better texture. But uh, overall, not bad. Not bad. Six out of ten. <laughs> well, I should give a little more in-depth review of these. They're actually quite good. I've, you know, I thought I would stop. I've eaten a whole two sausages now. <laughs> this is the last bite. The only problem is, is yeah, the peas are yummy in there. They're kind of juicy. But the texture is the problem. It kind of just crumbles out of the sausage casing and the outside of the sausage casing is chewy. So I think if I were to make these again, I wouldn't change the recipe except for the potatoes. I think I would haul the potatoes out of there and use a binder and then serve these on potatoes, on like a bed of mashed potatoes. That's how, that's, uh, that's how I do them, because they're actually quite good. I've, like I said, this is to the end of the second sausage, so the gravy in there is really juicy, but it's the texture from the potatoes that gives, that makes the sausage casing tough, so. There you go. That's a better review, I feel. Yeah, I'm eating the third one.